The solid silver with beauty that lives forever is International Sterling. From Hollywood, International Silver Company, creators of International Sterling, presents The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring America's favorite young couple, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. great nation of ours, from the rock-bound coast of Maine to the sunny shores of California, each man has a neighbor. Of course, you can have many neighbors, but there's always one who's your favorite. The neighbor you tell your troubles to, borrow the rake or lawnmower from, play golf or go fishing with. Such a neighbor is Mr. Thornberry, who lives next door to the Nelsons. That's Mr. Thornberry in the Nelson living room, the man sitting in Ozzie's favorite chair. Oh, Ozzie just walked into the room. Huh, looks like he's carrying a pot of coffee. Here you are, Thorny. I've made another nice, fresh pot for you. Hey, let me pour you some. Yeah, just warm up the grounds in the bottom of my cup. There you are. <laughs> you want cream and sugar? Oh, uh, yes, please, Oz. I'll have about six lumps and a half a cup of cream. <laughs> Thorny, you're going to kill the taste of the coffee. It's the humane thing to do, Oz. <laughs> I hate to say this, old man, but this coffee tastes like cough medicine. Oh, Thorny, don't be so unpleasant. Let's enjoy ourselves. After all, we don't get rid of... Uh, the, the wives don't go out very often. And let's have a nice, friendly evening. Yeah, you're right, Oz. It is nice and comfortable here. That fire's so warm and friendly. Have you seen any good movies lately? Mm, uh, I saw Apartment for Peggy last week. Oh? Did you like it? Peggy was cute. I didn't think too much of the apartment, though. <laughs> I saw a great picture last night. Really exciting. It was called Man's Struggle for Survival. Oh, a husband and wife picture? <laughs> No, no, it, it was about a, a French-Canadian woodsman, Pierre Baptiste. Guy didn't even know he was being photographed. Very exciting stuff. Shooting a rapids, big game hunting. Oh, Thorny, cut it out. How could they photograph a guy doing that stuff without his knowing it? Yeah. Well, they claimed it was authentic. But come to think of it, for a French-Canadian who had never left the woods, he certainly could tap dance awfully well. <laughs> I'm surprised you're being so gullible, Thorny. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're absolutely right, Oz. I'm embarrassed. I'm crushed. I'm humiliated. A discredit to the community. I wish I were dead. Give me another cup of your coffee. <laughs> I wouldn't take it that hard, old man. Sometimes the thin line between fact and fiction is pretty hard to distinguish. Yeah, I think you've got something there, Oz. Oh, sure. As a matter of fact, if you pick the right subject, practically anybody will get a little careless with the truth. Let me tell you a very interesting little story that happened right here in the living room. Is this a true story, Oz, or one of your semi-documentaries? Drop your feet up there, Thorny, and get yourself comfortable. It happened, oh, I'd say it was about a couple of years ago. You know Charlie Miller down at the drugstore? Well, it seems I owed him a dime, and I went into the store to pay him back. Hello, Charlie. Oh, hi, Mr. Nelson. Say, I'm glad you're here. You can help me with a very big financial problem. I guess I'm just in time. <laughs> Here's the dime I owe you. <laughs> oh, no, it isn't that, Mr. Nelson. As a matter of fact, I'd completely forgotten about the dime. It concerns this... Uh... Oh, don't put it back in your pocket. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it concerns this young man here, a stranger in town. Oh, hello there. Hello. What do you do, Charlie? Buy a five-cent Coke and read ten dollars' worth of comic books? Oh, much more serious. You see, he wants to buy this Junior Magic set. It costs 89 cents, but his entire capital at the moment consists of 80 cents. We have a deficit there of 9 cents. Hmm, that creates a bit of a problem, doesn't it? I told him I'd pay it back. Yeah, I know, but you realize 9 cents is a lot of money. And for 9 cents, you can, uh... You can weigh yourself nine times. <laughs> I think you can trust him, Charlie. He seems to have an honest face. Yes, he has. However, I'd have a hard time getting his face in the cash register. <laughs> Nevertheless, I see no reason why you two gentlemen can't get together on this. Why not put it on a strictly business basis? Maybe there's something you can give Mr. Miller as security. What's that? Oh, something you own that he can keep until the debt is paid. Oh, well, it's a little cold to go barefooted, No, but... no, no, no. I couldn't take your shoes, son. I've got a little boy of my own, and I know why. What size are they? <laughs> oh, Charlie, cut it out. Maybe you don't know me, Mr. Charlie, but I'll bet you know my father. Oh, I don't think I do. 
Do you know the boy's father, Mr. Nelson? Oh, I don't think so. What's your father's name, Sonny? Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. <laughs> Bing Crosby. Well, the name's familiar. Did you ever hear of the Paramount Pictures? Oh, sure. They work for him. <laughs> Bing Crosby, you know Mr. Miller. Oh, in the blue of the night meets the goal of the day. Yeah, that's him. Golly, what's the matter with his voice? <laughs> well, well, so your father's Bing Crosby. Honest, and my mother's Mrs. Crosby. Yeah, that follows. <laughs> I'll bet you don't know who this gentleman is. You call him Mr. Nelson. Oh, that's just because I know him so well. His real name is Admiral Nelson of the British Navy. <laughs> Fought in the Battle of Trafalgar Square. Oh, you shouldn't have told him, Charlie. Where's your uniform? Oh, I only wear my gold uniform on shipboard. You see, right now I'm on shore leave. Uh, suppose I advance you the necessary nine cents to complete this transaction, Mr. Crosby. Golly, thank you, sir. I'll pay you back. Oh, of course. In fact, while you're in town, I'd like very much to have you bring your father and come on out to the house for dinner tonight. Oh, that Admiral Nelson's a real sport. He'll eat with anybody. <laughs> Thanks very much. I think my father would be glad to come out. I'll give you the address on this card here, Mr. Crosby. It's, uh, 1847 Rogers Road. You can't miss the house. Probably several gunboats anchored out in front. <laughs> what time shall we be there? Oh, about six bells or 6.30 bells. <laughs> Gentlemen, my humble establishment has been honored by the presence of two such famous figures. I salute you both. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. They'll always be in England. They'll always be a Crosby. <laughs> the dishes? I could use a little. Where are the boys? Uh-uh, you're out of luck. They're down at the playground. Grab a towel. There's a guy right for walking in the kitchen. Oh, before I forget it, dear, I think you better have a little talk with Ricky. Oh, what's he been up to now? I saw his teacher at the PTA meeting today. Seems he's been telling some pretty big whoppers at school. Oh, well, that's not so unusual at his age. You should have seen a little kid down at the drugstore. He's telling everybody his father's Bing Crosby. He's a cute little guy. I said, come on out to dinner tonight. Bring your father with you. But he stuck right to his story. Well, maybe he was telling the truth, dear. Bing Crosby's supposed to be in town. Now, how do you like that? A little boy makes up a story. Well, I didn't get this from a little boy. Mother phoned a few minutes ago, and she said she was positive she saw Bing Crosby sitting in the lobby of the Harrison Hotel. Oh, Harriet, how could she tell? Well, for one thing, he was dressed like Bing Crosby. <laughs> Probably just some guy being initiated into a fraternity. <laughs> well, you know your mother's eyes aren't too good. It could have been a loud slip cover on one of the chairs. Come in. Oh, hello, Emmy Lou. Oh, hello, Emmy. Come on in and sit down. Oh, I can't sit down. I'm too excited. I'm so thrilled. I've got cold chills running up my spine. <laughs> what was that? They ran down again. <laughs> Take it easy, Emmy Lou. Take it easy? Oh, Mr. Nelson, how can you say that? Evidently, you haven't heard the news. He's here in town, the one, the only, Bing Crosby. Not a movie, not a photograph, not a record, but for real, himself in the... I blush when I say it. Flesh. <laughs> well, there you are, dear. I hate to disillusion you, Emmy Lou, but Bing Crosby is not in town. Just a silly rumor that got started. Oh, Mr. Nelson, I'm sure you're mistaken. I know he's in town. I feel it. I just love Bing Crosby. He's so... so... <laughs> I used to think Rudy Valley was... <laughs> oh, now, well... <laughs> oh, is that 
for, Mr. Nelson? Harriet, stop dripping that wet dishcloth down my leg. <laughs> I hate to rush off, but I simply have to spread the good news. Uh, Emmy, won't you give us just one more little squeal before you go? Oh, Mr. Nell, Ozzie, stop teasing her. Oh, please, Emmy. Uh, wait, let me loosen my tie. <laughs> now look into my eyes. For you, my life, my love, my all. <laughs> I surrender, dear. <laughs> It's absolutely fantastic the way a story travels. A little kid in a drugstore makes up a whopper. Hey, Mom, Pop, Bing Crosby's in town. He really is, Pop. Is that Hotel Harrison? Well, here you go again, dear. Uh, look, boys, I hate to disillusion you, but I can assure you Bing Crosby is not in town. Well, it seems to me the easiest way to find out would be to phone the hotel. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll phone the hotel. At the risk of making myself look ridiculous, I'll prove just how silly this whole thing is. Hotel Harrison. Hello. <laughs> I know this is going to sound peculiar. <laughs> but I'm trying to convince my wife of something. All right, put her on. Where shall I say you were last night? <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. Uh, <laughs> is Bing Crosby there? Bing Crosby? No, he isn't. Oh, he isn't. Oh, that's too bad. He's gone for the day. <laughs> You mean he is staying there? He's in town? Well, certainly. Didn't you know? Well, yeah, yeah, oh, of course. I, I, I knew he was at the hotel. I, I just wasn't sure he was in town. I, I, uh, oh, yes, yes. He and his little boy, Lindsay, checked in this morning. They left about ten minutes ago. About ten minutes ago? Uh, did he say where he was going? Well, uh... <laughs> Mr. Crosby is such a funny man. <laughs> he says such funny things. <laughs> He said he was going out to have dinner with Admiral Nelson. <laughs> In the vine-covered halls of Nelson U. at 1847 Rogers Road, Professor Oswald G. Nelson is delivering an account from the vast storehouse of his personal experiences... This one for the purpose of proving that under the proper conditions and given the proper subject, any human being will depart from the truth. So naturally, Thorny, Harriet found it a little hard to believe that Bing was coming out to our house. Uh, here, let me pour you some more coffee. Oh, no more, please, Oz. I've had 12 cups. <laughs> Every time I move, I slosh. <laughs> Just tell me what happened. Well, you know how women are. Harriet immediately began to get all excited. Well, thank goodness I cleaned the house this morning, and there's a roast in the oven for dinner. Settle down, Harriet. This is Bing Crosby that's coming out, not Clifton Webb or Adolph Manjou. <laughs> we don't want the house all spick and span. He's a casual, easygoing guy. Dump some tobacco on the rug and <laughs> get David's BB gun to hang on the wall. Say, I wonder if that old mounted swordfish is still up in the attic. I could put it right over the mantel. No sign of him yet, Pop. Look, even watch outside. Look out, Pop. He's spilling tobacco on that chair. Yeah, I know it, David. Here, uh, spread these magazines around the table sort of careless-like. What's the idea, Pop? I've just been explaining to your mother there's only one way to make Bing feel at home. That is to mess up the house. I might <laughs> add that I don't agree. Harry, that's the way Bing is. Gee, Pop, I've seen him in lots of movies, but he doesn't look messy to me. David, you can't tell anything from a movie. He's really a mess, huh, Pop? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say he's a mess, Ricky. Not himself. He just looks a mess. Uh, I mean, stop. <laughs> you know what I mean. He's just a relaxed guy. Have you ever noticed he always walks uh, uh, sort of like he's sitting down? <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, and another thing. Now, this is very important, boys. Let's not bother them with a lot of questions about Hollywood and motion pictures and movie stars. No questions about Roy Rogers or Gregory Peck or Betty Grable or, or Jane Russell or, or Lana. Uh, of course, if he wants to talk about them, that's different. <laughs> oh, and above all, don't ask him to sing. That's like inviting a doctor over and getting free medical advice. <laughs> if he wants to sing, he'll sing, but let's not bother him. Come on, David. Let's go outside. Maybe he's coming. What was that, dear? I just put another rip in my sweatshirt. I'll make him feel more comfortable. I wonder what he likes to eat. I'd like to have something special. There you go again, Harry. Just throw a couple of old pieces of venison on the stove. Wonder where we could get some moose meat. 
Do you think he'll mind eating on the dining room table, or should we just sit cross-legged around the incinerator? <laughs> Yeah, I'll get it. Harriet Bing Crosby. Oh, I, I'm just awfully glad you could come, Mr. Crosby. Or should I could you call you Bing? Oh, do. By all means. I'll call you Harriet. And uh, I take it you're Admiral Nelson? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were having a little joke with Lenny. He's a great little guy. Uh, by the way, where is he? Oh, we met your two Pinkerton men down the road a piece there, and Lenny joined up with them. They got something going in the vacant lot. Oh, by the way, a funny thing happened to me on the way to your house. Uh, p- pardon me, Bing. <laughs> you get that, Harriet? That smooth, professional way he, he slides into a gag. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Bing? Uh, well, uh, you I see, was, Harriet, was... that's what you call a straight line. I kind of throw that out to him, and then he punches over the kicker. <laughs> that's marvelous. Uh... <laughs> What happened, Bing? No, no, Oz. It wasn't a gag. A cute little Bobby Soxer walked up to me and said, uh, Bing Crosby? I said yes, and she said... Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, knows he gets a little, uh, he gets a little <laughs> horse whinny into the lap. Yeah. <laughs> it was a filly, you know. Oh. <laughs> that was Emmy Lou, I guess. Let me take your overcoat, Bing. Thanks. But I better warn you, uh, I'm afraid I'm not properly dressed. Don't be silly, Bing. Feel at home here. Look at me. Don't feel shy about your clothes. Off with that overcoat. Let's have a look at that sloppy shirt and those baggy pants. What? That isn't exactly what I'm worried about, Oz. Look, I'm wearing a tuxedo. Tuxedo? Mm-hmm. Well, well, Bing, I always... It's quite a story. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Lake Tehachapuku. Oh, Lake Tehachapuku. Well, well, sure. Uh, we go up there all the time. What about the lake? I fell in this afternoon. <laughs> I shot a 1,500-pound moose, and I was carrying it across my shoulders. You know, and I stepped on a slippery rock and fell in with all my clothes on. That's how come the tux. A 1,500-pound moose, and you carried him? Well, his back feet were dragging. <laughs> Mom! Oh, Lenny, I, I thought you were out playing with the boys. We came in to get a drink of water. Oh, hello, Lenny. Hello, Admiral. Uh, this is Mrs. Nelson, Lenny. How do you do, Your Majesty? <laughs> How are you fellas getting along? Okay, Mom. Well... Pop, I just heard you telling about a big moose you bagged this afternoon. Uh, now go out and play, son. The older folks are talking. To you. <laughs> Pop! Out, out. Tally ho, boy. Go, boy. <clears throat> Pop, I was with you all afternoon. I didn't see you shoot any moose. Lenny. Uh... The only thing you shot was an owl. The only reason you got him, because they can't see in the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny, boy. Go out and play now. Here's a nickel, a nice shiny one. Your dad just got in a new shipment. Go ahead now. <laughs> Okay, last one's out, Bob Hope. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I guess the cat's out of the bag. Oh, you mean about the moose? Oh, forget it, Bing. No, I, I want to confess. Oh, there's no need to confess. We didn't believe you anyway. I, I, I mean... <laughs> what do you think of the story so far, Thorny? Well, come on, Oz, don't stop now. What happened next? Relax, Thorny. When I tell a story, I like to take my time. Here, let me pour you another cup of coffee. Oh, no, Oz, please. (laughs) Okay, no coffee, no story. Okay, Oz, pour away. I wish I had an almanac. I'd like to know just how high my tide is. (laughs) Come on, finish the story, Oz. Well, sir, after dinner, we moved into the living room, and the boys went out to play. It was very pleasant sitting there talking while Bing smoked his pipe. Tell us something about your latest picture, Bing. <laughs> Don't make him talk shop, Harriet. It's a little thing paramount is Bing, you're on a vacation. Why not forget about work? Let's talk about hunting. I understand the ducks are running. Ozzy, <laughs> if Bing wants to tell us about the picture he's making, let him tell But us. he just told you, Harriet. It's a picture they're making at Paramount. What more is there to tell? Well, it's called the Connecticut Yankee in King Mom, Arthur's we Court. Here? You know, the... Uh... Uh, yes, dear. Take one out of the kitchen. What were you saying about the picture, Bing? Harriet, well, would you please let him forget about his pictures? <laughs> Have you done much hunting this season, oh, Bing? Oh, a little now and then. And speaking of hunting, they do quite a bit of it in England, you know. That's the locale of the picture. Has a wonderful cast, Sir Cedric Hardwick and Bill Bendix. And... When are you going to sing, Mr. Crosby? Well, just please, a... David. Now that's not nice. <laughs> After all, Harriet, what are you doing? Oh, good. You going to play for us, Harriet? I hope this isn't too forward of me, but could I coax you to sing just one little song? Oh no, Harriet. Oh well, if it'll make you happy. 
How about uh, Ding Dong Daddy from Dumas? <laughs> I'll do a verse and two choruses. You remember, Harriet, I sing it in the key of G flat. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I meant Bing. But Harriet, he doesn't want to sing. I do so. You do not. I do so. Do not. So. Not. So. <coughs> well, okay, you can sing, but no whistling. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Oz. Oh, Harriet, that's my favorite tune. Love it. East is east and the west is west and the wrong one I have chose. Let's go where you keep on wearing those frills and flowers and buttons and bows. Rings and things and buttons and bows. A good left hand, Harry. <laughs> Don't bury me in this prairie. Take me where the cement grows. Let's move down to some big town Where they love a gal by the cut of her clothes And you'll stand out in your buttons and bows I love you in buckskin Or skirts that you've homespun But I love you long and strong Where your friends don't tote a gun My bones denounce that buckboard bounce And the cactus hurts my toes Let's vamoose where the gals keep using those silks and satins and linens that shows And you're all mine in buttons and bows Give me eastern trimming where the women are women in high silk hose and peekaboo clothes And French perfume that rocks the room And you're all mine in buttons and bows Just wonderful thing. That doesn't break the lease. You folks are in pretty solid. Hey, what's that crowd out on the front lawn? Mr. Nelson, sir? Uh, yes, Lenny? Here's the nine cents I owe you. Well, thank you. That's very prompt payment. Here's a dollar and a quarter. Well, what's this for? Well, we figured it was only fair to give you 10% of the gate receipt. <laughs> well, what's this? That's what the chairs were for. We charge people 10 cents to hear Mr. Cosby sing. <laughs> Well, how did the people know he was here? We had this sign on the front lawn. Look at it. Isn't it a beauty? Listen to the golden voice of Bing Crosby at 8 p.m. <laughs> Seats, 10 cents. Hey, you guys are pretty sharp. It's a very nice lettering on that sign, too. Uh, did you do it, David? No, sir. Oh, you did it, Ricky? No, sir. Oh, you did it, Lenny? No, sir. Well, come on, son. I think it's time we better... <laughs> We've had a wonderful time, Ozzie and Harriet. <laughs> Invite us again real soon, won't you? Oh, you bet. We've enjoyed every minute of it. Good night, Bing. Good night, Lenny. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, come on, boys. Way past your bedtime. Let's go. Oh, okay, come on, Ricky. You coming upstairs, dear? Mm, uh, I'll, I'll be up in a minute. How did you like Bing? Isn't he a wonderful guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a swell guy. Hurry up, boys. Not a bad guy, I suppose. Shame he's such an awful ham. <laughs> oh, well, I guess that's the way those guys get. Let's see. I'm a ding dong daddy from Dumas. You ought to see me do my stuff. <laughs> You see, Thorny, even Bing Crosby is capable of telling a tall story if you get him on the right subject. That moose story he told was worse than some of yours. Uh, there's just one thing, Oz. When Bing came in, he called you folks Ozzy and Harriet. How did he know your first names? Well, are you implying I made that story up as I went along? I don't know, Oz. Did you? <laughs> Thorny, how can you say that? How come he knew your name right off? Well, it, he he remembered it from the from the first time he was here. First time, Thorny. You mean to say I've never told you about the first time Bing came to the house? Oh, it's a very interesting story. Here, let me pour you some more coffee. <laughs> Bing Crosby appeared through the courtesy of the Silco Company. Lindsay Crosby appeared through the courtesy of his mother. Tune in next week to another adventure of Ozzie and Harriet, starring Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard. This is Burns Smith speaking.